David Menzies for Rebel News here in Mississauga, Ontario. And um, one of the things that we have learned with the coronavirus crisis is who is essential and who is not so essential. And folks, I would argue that one of the most essential people we have, in addition to those in the medical profession, are the truckers of this nation. Everything you see and buy on store shelves, it got there on the back of a truck. And I am with Guy Broderick. He is a manager and a veteran trucker here at Apps Transport Group. And you would think that these superheroes would be warmly embraced in this day and age of the COVID-19 crisis, but just wait till you hear the kind of disrespect Mr. Broderick and his brothers and sisters driving these 18 wheelers are taking on an almost daily basis. One of the biggest factors that our drivers are experiencing is the fact that they cannot use a washroom. And I heard stories from our drivers, then I actually heard it firsthand myself. And uh, I drove just last week, two and a half hours to get to one of our customers. And uh, to my surprise, when I got there, I asked very politely, could I use the bathroom? And they said, oh, we have to check with the manager. They go inside, then they come out and they said, if you really have to go, you're going to have to go behind the trailer. Well, I, I guess they're big. I do understand the situation where they want to limit people entering their buildings. But the science has reported consistently since the whole beginning of this crisis, the best way to prevent this disease from going further is to wash your hands. That's the biggest line of defense. And to tell people, oh, you can't use our facilities. You're going to have to go outside and you have nowhere to wash your hands. That's it, it's quite atrocious. Can you imagine being a female driver and that's being told to you, oh, you cannot use our facilities? Or if you had a medical condition where some people have medical conditions where they need to go to the bathroom more often than others. Can you imagine being in that situation where you're told, sorry, you can't enter our facility? Now, I will point out that I've had experience like this prior to this whole pandemic with companies where they've had washrooms available for drivers and then they stopped the facilities being allowed to be used by drivers. Oh, so wait a minute, this is interesting. You're saying that even in the best of times, there was no oh, pandemic going on. You were still being treated oh, this, yeah. and I'll call it inhumanely, yes. Guy, because I, I think the use of a washroom, I think that's pretty much a basic human right. It's a huge human right. And I, rem I remember saying to the lady, like I would go to the same company all the time for a pickup, and all of a sudden they had a sign in their window, facilities are not for driver's use anymore. You have to go to the truck stop. Well, I'm doing a pickup there. I'm gonna be sitting there for two hours. I have to go. For me to walk to the truck stop, you're looking at a 25 minute walk for me just to get there, to turn around and walk back. And when you hear stories from other drivers, like I, I'm very well connected on social media with guys across the country and ladies, and when you hear what they have been experiencing, it really is unbelievable. And I, I really have to thank uh, the trucking associations in the U.S. as well as the CTA, the pro other provincial associations and the OTA here in Canada. They've been pushing the government hard, right? And then you just take a look. The Premier Doug Ford, he talked about it. Oh, have a heart, you know, like, like open up the the washrooms for for these truckers it's not right it's not fair they're doing their job we all we all have to work together he talked how the trucking industry you need to have these service centers open you need to have these truck stops open you need to let these men and women do their jobs and have safe clean areas for them to do their business and to sleep and rest and everything okay, like i was at a place this morning uh one of our customers and i have to admit uh, I was quite impressed by it I was standing there at the counter at the driver's window they're very precautious they only let the window open an inch before you even walk in the place you have to go to an office trailer in the parking lot you see a nurse she uh, puts a thermometer on your forehead if you have any kind of fever they won't let you in the building so they're taking all those precautionary measures 
But when you go in there, you're you're standing there at the counter, and the gentleman comes through. Excuse me, sir. I just need to sanitize the counter. So he comes in and he sprays his uh, disinfectant on the counter, wipes it all down. You that f- particular facility, the washrooms were totally open for the drivers. There's hand sanitizer pumps all in the driver's waiting area. That's a place that really takes care of professional drivers. But then I go to other places and they'll have six drivers, eight drivers, all standing shoulder to shoulder in a tiny room waiting to get their paperwork. It's it's a plea, please, right? We're all human. We all have those certain bodily functions, right? We all need to go to the bathroom. We all need to eat. We all need to grab a coffee. Like this is a crisis situation that the world in our lifetime has never seen, right? We are doing things like in the the trucking industry or the rail industry, they're moving freight at volumes that we haven't seen in a very long time. But to do those freight volumes, you need people to do it. You need the equipment to do it. And people need to understand this is not an easy job, right? Like you look at an average driver, they're working 10, 13 hours a day driving. Right. That that can take a lot on somebody. Right. And you you need to understand this. And I think with the way things have evolved with give or take within the past two weeks, I think you're seeing the attitude of a lot of people, whether it's on the corporate side or whether it's on uh, the smaller side where they're realizing that the transportation industry is critical. Hey folks, unlike the media party, we don't receive a single nickel's worth of government funding. We depend on you, our viewers, to keep us going. So if you can, please go to helprebelnews.com. That's helprebelnews.com. Chip in a couple of bucks so that we can continue to bring you the other side of the story.